Let's see. And the whole while we're live streaming, feel welcome to have, you know, a fork, a spoon. It doesn't matter if it's silver or plastic. Feel welcome to just have something in your hands and enjoy holding it. Um, you will need to, like, actually put a little pressure on it when you bend it. But, uh, I mean, the goal is eventually to get to the point where you can just hold it, look at it, and it will melt with your thoughts but that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself while you're still learning. So yes, you will use your hands, um, but the energy coming through your hands will make the metal so soft that a little bit of force will have a huge effect. So instead of being like this nice solid bit of silverware that you use for like eating and washing and tossing in the silverware drawer and all that, it will be like soft, like taffy, and you may even feel it get very, very warm, depending on uh, the kind of energy that you have. Uh, some people, it stays the same temperature. Some people, it gets cold, but some, like for me, it gets really hot. So everyone, the whole time we're talking, feel welcome to have a silverware or a plasticware. I keep a big box of cheap silverware or plasticware on hand all the time so that if I feel like bending a lot of spoons, I'm not like bending a lot of expensive stuff. Um, and uh, just feel welcome to play with it. So spoon bending, we call it, whether it's a fork, a spoon, a knife. I've got some bent knives here somewhere. Here's a bent plastic knife. And here's the thing, like, you think, oh, it's plastic, it'll bend. Um, if you don't do the energy work with it, it will just snap. But when you do the energy work, you can make it super malleable and it will hold that shape. So um, here's a few, like, here's a fork that I bent, another fork, and you see this tight little curly cue? So for anyone who's been thinking, oh yeah, sure, she can bend it, but she has to put a lot of force into it, there's no level of forceful bending that will make that little teeny tiny curly cue. I mean, maybe if I was a big strong guy, but you know, I'm just a little middle-aged gal. So these tight little curls here, that comes from my energy supercharging the fork or the spoon or whatever. Um, also, I'll tell you, I have a little bit of like uh, tendonitis, arthritis from doing too much computer work. So I can't, and also my left shoulder has been rebuilt several times. So I can't force it because my body would not let me even if I wanted to. I love this one. <laughs> um, okay, so, and where, where's uh, my signature? Ah. This is one of my favorite things. I take the handle and I just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it around itself. Sometimes I'll get five or six wraps, like that would be with an iced teaspoon. But you see it's, this one is one, two, three, four wraps around itself. So that obviously comes from energy work. And also sometimes you, if you get a silverware that has a pattern on it and um, it's like a little bit sheeted, when you go to bend it, you might find it'll just kind of snap on a weak spot. Don't worry about that. That happens to everyone. That's happened to me a lot of times. Right. So everyone, I'm going to start with a nice big soup spoon. This is a commercial grade soup spoon. I'm a retired chef and um, I, uh, um, oh, here's a soup spoon that I bent. So this is a soup spoon. It is not flimsy. This is the kind of soup spoon I used when I was a catering chef. 
It's pretty good quality. I wrapped it one, two, three, four, five times around itself here, which is what I'll probably be doing today because that's an easy icebreaker. Now, if you go with the curve of the handle, so you're going this way with the bowl going down, it will be easier than if you go against the curve of the handle because you're going against the arch. However, they both work. I've seen both done. So, spoon bending. <laughs> Why would anyone do something so crazy? Oh, hi, Ava. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Ava's a great spoon bender and energy person. Um, the reason I bend spoons, much to like some of the people I'm disciple with, you know, gurus and shamans, the reason I do it is because it's fun. It makes me happy. The other reason is like for any of you who do Reiki work or hi Angela, if any of you do Reiki work or anything like that, you know, someone's lying on your massage table or whatever and you're like waving your hands and you're having an experience, you're feeling things, but until they're done and they sit up and they say, oh, that was great, thank you, you don't really know you know, unless you were like super experienced, you don't really know. So when you practice things like spoon bending and small object levitation, and uh, which I also study and, um, you know, elemental works, what you're doing is you're learning when the energy flows through me this way, I have whatever immediate effect. So then when you're with your client and the energy is flowing with you this way, you know the effect. So it's a good technical skill developer, like uh, practicing the scales when you're playing piano. The other reason is we have been taught how reality is. And those of us who practice any kind of spiritual or energetic work, we've learned that the reality we were taught is a very small version of the real reality, the true reality, that there's so much more out there that we have to uh, open ourselves to and get ready to explore. Um, when you are given something that you have always been taught, this is solid, this has been solid, it will always be solid, and then you make it very, very soft and malleable, you are learning that you can redefine your reality. If you can redefine your reality for this, what else can you redefine your reality for? I have several friends, some of whom are with us today on Zoom, who we talk about how we manifest the realities we want. We contact each other saying, so I'm trying to make X happen or Y happen. So I'm doing this kind of meditation, that kind of work. We work with each other and it is amazing the, uh, the wonderful realities that then open up for us. So spoon bending is teaching you how to define reality to be the way you wish it to be. So let's define reality to be how we want. Uh, grab some silverware or plasticware and um, hold it in your hands. So there are several layers to spoon bending. One layer is bending the energy of the spoon, but the spoon itself doesn't bend. So it could be, and believe me, I've been there. <laughs> you have your eyes closed and you're bending and you're like, you feel it, you feel it, and you go to bend it and you think you bent it and then you open your eyes and it's solid. You have been bending the energy of the spoon, but not the physical energy. Don't worry, it's a step towards it. So don't become disheartened if uh, you feel like you're bending the spoon. And, um, <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, thanks about my house in Maine, congrats. Yeah, like talk about manifestation. I just got my dream house in Maine and it was amazing all, everything that came into place for this to happen. So still a lot of work to do, you know, and, but it was quite a miracle. So 
take the hand, spoon in your hands and um, understand from this point on, the question is not, can you bend the spoon? The question is, which sort of frequency is most compatible with you to accomplish the spoon bending? For people who are very down to earth and grounded, something like quantum spoon bending is like the best because you're, it's a very earthy, grounded way to bend spoons. For people who are very delicate in energy or like angelic connected, then angelic spoon bending because that's the energy that flows naturally through you. For people who maybe have a lot of self-doubt, um, inviting someone you trust in the non-physical, be it your soul or someone you love who passed that you trust or um, your guide, your guardian angel, to come and send their energy through you and do it for you while using your body. You are channeling the power of someone you trust completely to do this for you in your body. That works really well. So we're going to practice those three techniques and um, five will get you 10, at least one of them will work for you. And if it doesn't work for you now, I will load this video. It will be here on Facebook. I'll load it to YouTube and I'll also have this on my uh, the bonitawoods.org channel. I have like 30, 40 different spoon bending videos. Some are long, some are a few minutes short, so you can take your pick. Go onto my website, it's free. There's no charge for this. It's because I want people to define reality the way you want it to be. I want your reality to be the way you want it to be. And I want everyone to have fun with this. So go to bonitawoods.org, sign up for the free program, Spoon Bending, and I've got like 30, 40 videos there. Practice with it, you will be shocked that it will click into place. So let's start with quantum spoon bending. Um, and if, like I said, if quantum doesn't really work for you, don't worry. Then five will get you 10. <laughs> That's my phrase for today. The angelic will work for you. Uh, so funny. I think I must have some guide with me who likes that phrase because it's not one I normally use. Okay, what time is it? Perfect. Okay, so like I said, hold your spoon. First, we're going to do a little energy meditation. So everyone go ahead and relax. For this, from this moment on, we don't need to control our bodies. We don't need to manage our bodies. Our bodies can control and manage and focus and direct themselves. You know, when we're asleep at night, we don't control our bodies. And, you know, when we're in our mother's wombs, we didn't control our bodies. Our bodies are able to manage without us directing them like some sort of backseat driver. So just give your body permission to manage itself so that you can give yourself permission to open up and invite beautiful energy to work with you, to flow into you, to be one with you. So give your body permission to relax. Give your lungs permission to breathe however they want to breathe. And if you feel any part in your body that feels tight or sharp or pained or, you know, miserable, acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. Give it permission to take a break from its activity and just enjoy this little moment with you. And then it's on its own. Give your body permission to relax so that all the energy that's in your body 
can flow on down through your body, down through your legs, through your ankles, through your feet, and down through the bottom of your feet, deep into earth. Give the bottom of your feet permission to just be open wide so that all the energy that's in you can flow down, flow down and out into earth where our beloved Mother Earth, Gaia, Pacamama, receives all of your energy and absorbs it, transmutes it to the highest frequency of love, tenfold, a thousandfold, then sends it off to wherever it's needed. As all this energy is flowing down through your body, down through your feet, to our beloved Earth Mother. You may notice the top of your head is feeling light and airy, tingly, relaxed, open as your crown chakra and the top of your head open up to receive beautiful, sacred, divine energy to flow into you, replace all of the energy that was there Keep on flowing down through you, down through your feet, into earth. You are welcome to speak up and tell whatever is out there in whatever dimension, whatever frequency, only sacred divine loving energy is welcome here. But sacred divine energy, you are welcome as much as you would like to flow. I am delighted to be your conduit. You can call out to your soul, to your guardian angel, and say, I charge you with being the gatekeepers to my energy. So only the highest frequency of love and grace can get past you and flow on down, filling me, flowing through me. Filling my bones, my organs, my chakras, my flesh. Flowing on down through me into earth, flowing around me. So I am one in a stream of the flow of the highest frequency of sacred, divine, blessed love. If you feel any pain or pressure, the energy flowing in, that's just your body's natural protection, guarding against any invading forces. Give your body permission to relax and receive and flow. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do some quantum spoon bending to kick this off. It's a very grounding and universal cosmic energy. In quantum spoon bending, we realize that time and space are really kind of just by our imagination. So we don't need to be told how things are. We can look in and determine how things will be. We can look into the cycle of time and take the best moment and connect it with the present now so that the present now has the best of everything. I mentioned I'm a chef. Imagine you're making a stew and you take the best ingredients and add them and a little bit of salt for flavor and some liquid amino acids, a little more herbs. Time is not just one linear thing, it's moments. And we can define the moments to be however we wish them to be. We can take past moments and bring it to now. When you're feeling glum and you want to feel better, you have a happy memory. You're taking a past moment 
and bringing it to now. And then you feel better in the now. Our spoon, I will call them spoon, fork, knife, whatever, plastic plates. Our spoon has had a life history before this moment. Once upon a time, this spoon, if it's metal, if it's plastic, just bring the comparable. Once upon a time, this spoon was made of metal ore that was deep beneath the ground. A great deal of heat and pressure and elements combined over time to create this lump of metal ore that was dug up, taken to a factory warehouse where this lump was put in with other lumps and they were heated up, heated up till they were boiling, boiling metal, boiling hot liquid metal, and then poured into these molds shaped like spoons and then cooled, cooled so that the spoon that was liquid boiling became cooler and harder, cooler and harder until finally it was cool enough, hard enough they took it, shipped it off somewhere and eventually it came here to you. So Look at your spoon. You can talk to it. Hello, spoon. You seem a little tense today. Let's have a massage. Let me rub your little spoon shoulders. You had quite an adventure of it. Find all that beautiful, sacred, divine energy that's flowing into you and through you to flow down through your arms and your hands to your spoon. Invite the spoon to fill with this energy. Just like when, a, when you hug someone you love, when someone who loves you gives you a hug and it fills you with all that good feeling to be so loved. Let the spoon know that it's loved. You might want to close your eyes or space them out and hold your spoon. Let the energy flow in and remind the spoon. Go back to a time. Go back. Go back. To when you were not so hard. Go back to a time when you were soft, malleable. Back to a time when you were liquid. Go back, go back, go back, go back, back in time, back in time. Time is not like a line. Think of it as like a merry-go-round. And it is constantly returning to the places it has been before. Back in time, back in time. Soft and malleable. Soft and malleable, flowing with the energy. Soft and malleable, flowing with energy. When you feel like your spoon is ready, bend it. Bend it. Bend it fast. Bend it hard. And if you are bending your spoon and you go, oh my God, I'm bending my spoon and it stops, that's okay. Just get back into it, flowing with energy, flowing with energy and try again, try again. And remember, it's gonna take a little force, especially the very, very first push. Put all your energy into it, that's okay. You know, all that will happen is you either bend your spoon or you break your spoon or you go, oh, okay, it's not ready yet. 
and then you try again. But put all your energy into it, just like really, ooh, ooh. Because it's better to be a little forceful at first and then learn to pull back than to be too gentle. <laughs> I'm carrying the energy from the one to the other. There we go. I'm going to just carry a little energy from one to another. Right. So quantum spoon bending is really about letting any object in the moment return to a time when it was a different way. Oh, hi, Mariam. Hi, I'm so glad you could join us. Mariam Sardari is an amazing spoon bender. She attended the first class I taught, and then I've attended classes she's taught. She's good. So, I hope that was fun for you guys. Listen, and if it didn't work, don't worry. Don't worry. Again, you are learning a new skill. It's a skill that's going to teach you that you are capable of anything. How awesome is that? So for those of you who feel like, well, time bending, I don't know, not really my thing. Uh, don't worry. We're going to get in touch with our angels now. Okay. So if you want, you can grab a new spoon or keep working with the one you had, whichever works for you. It's all good by me. And um, I'm going to tell you something. Each and every one of us, while we are alive, whether we are of human origin or we're from some other collective or dimension, or species, or frequency. Each and every one of us, when we are incarnating as humans, has a guardian angel. Your guardian angel is not only with you every moment you're in life, but your guardian angel helped you plan your life when you were still with your soul before you came to life. A lot of guardian angels are bored because we're not making good use of them. But they are happy to help. They love to help. And they help in more ways than we realize. You know, they whisper warnings to us. Uh, when your gut instinct kicks in, a lot of times that's your angel trying to, like, alert you, you know, to take action or avoid action. You know, um, when you... Uh, get sudden warnings in your mind out of left field, a lot of times that's your guardian angel. So um, I love hanging out with mine. So we are going to invite our guardian angels to fill us with angelic love and to see what effect that has on our spoon. And the best part of this is whether you bend your spoon or not, it doesn't matter because you're going to be like, filled with the love of your guardian angel. How freaking awesome is that? <sighs> um, right. No one knows you better than your guardian angel, and no one loves you more than your guardian angel. So think about that. The one who knows you best loves you absolutely. So just know you are worthy of that much love. All right. So take your spoon in your hands. And remember, when we first do the first bend, we're going to... Okay, this spoon won't bend now because I haven't energized it. But we're going to put... 
<laughs> I'm gonna put a, in case any of you are wondering, like, is she real or faking it? <laughs> so we're gonna really work hard when we do the first bend, and you'll feel how malleable it becomes after that. So don't don't feel like you see I all of that work and <laughs> it just got a little curve. Okay, so invite all that energy to flow through you again. Your guardian angel and your soul are already here. And they're already, you know, guarding the gate. You are safe. You are protected. Only the highest frequency of love can flow to you and fill you. The highest frequency of love is so healing. Feel welcome to invite it into every pore of your body, every cell, every molecule. Let your bones fill with it and your organs. Let your heart and your soul, you know, the part that's in you to just gobble it up, breathe it in. The highest frequency of love. So nice. Invite your crown chakra to open up high and wide to fill all of this love, funnel it in and fill the top of your head. Go in and flow through your mind and down, filling your neck and your spine. All this love flowing down into your heart center and down through your body core and on down through your legs to your feet, down through your open bottom of your feet. So our beautiful Earth Mother takes all of that love, makes it even more powerful love, even more healing, and sends it off to the planet for anyone and everyone who needs. Just think, by opening yourself up to flow and glow with love, you are helping to heal our planet. Honor yourself as the kind, loving, benevolent being you are. Now, hold your spoon in your hands. Feel the energy flowing into your body and through your body, through your arms and your hands, your fingers and the palms of your hands into your spoon. And invite the energy to flow in and also to surround you like a love blanket. Above your crown chakra, up there is your guardian angel, the one who knows you better than you know yourself and who loves you completely, absolutely, who wants nothing more than for you to have an extraordinary life with as much joy and love as you can receive. Invite this energy to fill you. Your angel's love, pure. Invite your angel's love to flow into you, fill you up. Flowing around you like a mist flowing through your body, through your oxygen, your blood, through your chakras, through your being, down into earth, all around you. Invite your angel to come on down 
now I'm here with you to wrap around you. Invite your angel to wrap around you with a loving, pure, blessed embrace. You might feel like a blanket of wings and feathers wrapped around you. Pure love. Invite your angel to put their arms around your arms and their hands over your hands and to send their energy into your spoon. Just wallow in this pure angelic love. Let it fill your spoon. Everything, everything is permeable. Even your spoon has atoms that feel tightly bonded. Invite your spoon to relax. Let those atomic structure stretch out it a little bit so that your spoon too can absorb all of this angelic love. Angelic love through you, around you, radiating into your spoon. When you are ready, give a hard push on your spoon. Remember, the first push, maybe even the second, just feel welcome to do hard, a hard turn on your spoon. But you'll notice once you start pushing the spoon, it becomes much easier, much easier. Invited to keep filling with angelic love. And if you get surprised and everything freezes up, that's okay. Just take a moment, like it did here. Take a moment, return, return to your angel's embrace. Reconnect with the feeling of it. Send it into your silverware. And amazingly, it becomes very soft again. How are you guys doing? Oh my God, I love doing this so much. I love spoon bending. Like, hello, reality. You do what I tell you, and we'll all have a good time. I mean, like, oh my God, I got like one, two, three curls on the handle of the fork, and then I got the tines going every which way. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you guys something. I did spoon bending for like a year before I did fork bending because I was convinced in my like crazy stubborn head that the tines of the forks would hurt. So I wouldn't do fork bending. And then one day I went, right, if it's soft and malleable, it's not going to hurt. And ever since then, I've been doing fork bending. So it's so funny. I like had that notion in my head. 
I can't do it. And then I couldn't do it. And then once I realized, wait a minute, I can do it. Then I did it. So how's that? <laughs> so I mentioned that because um, if there's any of you watching this video and you're like, it's not working for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm not good enough or whatever. Understand anyone who's a successful spoon vendor has been where you are. It's not, are you good enough? It's which frequency works with you. And sometimes though, we got to do a little like releasing blocks, like, um, you know, like when everything's going so well that you think something terrible must be happening. So you stop it. And then later you're like, I should have gone all the way because it would have been so good. I just freaked out. Well, you know, it's pretty easy to freak yourself out at the last second when you're spoon bending. So if you're like, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. No, it didn't happen. Then don't worry about that. You just freaked yourself out. So here's the thing. If you are alone and there's no one around to judge you, then what the heck? Go for it. Have a good time. And, um, you know, use this as like a little bit of therapy. Okay, what kind of self-destructive nonsense do I got to release so I can bend spoons like Benita? Then you're like, oh, right. You know, people told me things that made me feel like less than my most brilliant self. And I believed them. But they don't know me. They don't know that I'm an eternal soul in a body for a few years. And I defined my body. I can do anything I want. Like they don't, why, why am I listening to them when I got like a guardian angel who's telling me I'm awesome and that I can do anything I want. So, you know, like I said, it's all about redefining your reality to be however you want it to be. So, um, uh, boy, we've got some great people joining. Oh, hi, Mary. Mary O'Brien is here. You guys, if you don't know Mary and her husband, Gary, uh, go to their website, The Path of Czar, D-Z-A-R, you know, or like find Mary here in the comments on my Facebook page and become her friend, you know, find their Czar Facebook page. They channel this loving collective from a different frequency in this universe, in this dimension. Czar is so brilliant and so funny. Like, I, when, when I need a lot of advice, like even, you know, the other month, I contacted them, I booked a session. I'm like, okay, Czar, what's going on? What am I supposed to do with my life here? You know, I have some questions. Help me figure it out. And, um, you know, of course, the things that Zara told me to do are like, oh man, <laughs> I don't want to do that. That means I have to work on myself as a human being. But everything Zara told me to do ended up being so helpful, very wise. And they have um, live streams like I do. And so I totally recommend check them out because Zara is all about creating reality to be the best and a lot of fun. Okay, so um, I hope by now you guys have had some level of success one way or another with spoon bending. And I know we're running through. It's a quick little program here. And uh, Karen, did you bend anything? Yay! <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, so... Um, we're going to do one more, and this is like the fun, freaky one. So um, we're going to connect with someone we love and trust completely. To so come in, and for those of you who do channeling, you are invited, if you are comfortable with channeling or experience, to invite them to come in and take over your body. For those of you who do not do channeling and are like, what is she talking about? Feel welcome to invite them to just send, fill you with their love and their confidence. Like when we're with our non-physical friends, be it your soul, your guardian angel, your guides and mentors, your past lives, 
uh, people you love who have passed or people through history you admire. Like, I want Cleopatra to come take over my body and bend the spoon. You know, if you feel like fully in alignment and connected with Cleopatra, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can ask. And, um, you know, she uh, might send part of her frequency. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> I won't get into too much detail during spoon bending, but she may uh, already have a fragment of her soul in you, or you may have given a fragment of your soul to her when she was in life. So you already have that connection, which is why you would think Cleopatra or whomever, you know? Um, so grab your spoon and let's get flowing. This one is fun. This one is fun. You know, invite yourself to really enjoy and feel good with this, this next lesson here. So flow with energy. By now, that's probably already happening. <laughs> Invite all of the highest frequency of sacred love from your soul, your guardian angel, and whomever else they consider good enough to like send their energy to you, to come fill you. And you know, you can give yourself a little body check if there's any parts in your body that feel pressure, pain, tense, you know, uncomfortable, acknowledge them and invite them to, you know, take a break from their work and just enjoy this love party that's happening inside of you. The energy fills you up and flows through you, down your legs, down through your feet, into earth. Even while we're talking, you may realize that you got a lot of energy, like, you know, if you're bending a spoon or a fork now, go for it. You know, it's all in the good. Uh, so invite the energy to, sometimes all this love has to be expressed. It can't just be contained. <laughs> so invite the energy to flow. Invite your angel and your soul to champion you, watch over you. Just breathe it in. Let it flow around you and in you and through you and radiate from you and flow down your arms into your hands that may feel super energized and into your spoon or fork or knife. You are so open and receptive. Who could resist this? I mean, you are at this moment one of the most welcoming vessels on our planet for anyone who is filled with pure love. So give yourself a moment to get someone you love, maybe someone you always love, or maybe someone who just pops in your mind, like Metatron, what are you doing here? But whoever is here for you, they're here already. They love you so much. And you can trust them, have faith in them. They will always look out for your best, most joyous, healthiest well-being in the here and now, your happiest, healthiest, most joyous state of well-being in the here and now. So, flowing with all this love, your crown chakra bright and open, your guardian angel and your soul invite and usher in one who loves you, 
one that you can have absolute trust and faith in. Come here and be with you. Give yourself a moment. Who is this? Who is here? Welcome. Welcome your beloved friend. And however you feel comfortable, invite them to come and be in your body, to surround your body, or to flow with the energy in your body. You may hear them whispering in your ear or thoughts rising up in the back of your mind. This may be visual, emotional, auditory, whatever experience you are having, honor it. If you feel in any way queasy or vertigo, just get the energy flowing. That just means that you forgot to flow your energy. So it's piling up inside of you. It's a lot of energy, a lot of love. Invite your beloved friend who loves you so well to bend the spoon with you, for you, whatever you like. They're here to help you. Bend, bend. Push your energy into it. Push it hard. Push it hard, but you'll notice one little hard push goes a very long way and the metal becomes soft and malleable in your touch. Push it hard and go. You're flowing with powerful energy. Malena, that's awesome. Push, flow, bend. Invite the one who loves you to just take over and bring their power, fill you with their power. I mean, you have a sacred, divine, non-physical spirit of pure love and capability here. Put them to work. Tell them, you bend the spoon. You do it. You do it for me. Bring your power in and make it happen. End. End. So good. Karen, I see you smiling again. What have you got there? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just saw your guardian angel to get back here and do some work. <laughs> But you guys, you see, we used three different techniques. Three techniques, and each one had a different energy flow. Each one had worked with different frequencies, had different temperature, different speed of conduit, right? And you know how each one felt for you. You know, which one is easier, which one worked, which one just like made everything melt in your hands. And as I said, go to my website, Bonita Woods, B O N I T A W O O D S dot O R G. I have like 30, 40 lessons there with all different techniques. I was bringing volcanoes to do it, like that is hot. <laughs> That's hot. With like animal spirit guides, with different kinds of energy, with sending the energy looping down your arm, through the spoon, up the arm, through your heart, and back around, around and around. Each time it gets more and more intense. I have somewhere you're holding it and you're sending the energy back and forth between your fingers. So it's all free, free. I just really, really, really want you guys to be bending spoons. I really do. <laughs> yes, yes, Karen, that's awesome. <laughs> I really want you guys to do that. And we also have a little like small object levitation on there, you know, as some bonus fun. I'm not super good at that yet, but mostly because like every time I start practicing, I get busy with other stuff. But, you know, I'm learning. 
and uh, you know, like really anything I can do, you can do. I mean, this is the truth of it. I'm not like some special spoon bending person. Um, you know, the way I learned was actually, um, hold on, I'm gonna grab my first one. Hold on, I might here, hold on one second. Okay. I spend a lot of time working with shamans. This is my uh, favorite medicine bag. It's actually a bag I got from Ama when I was at one of her uh, one of her um, prayers. Hmm. No, I don't have the first spoon I ever bent. I always keep it in here wherever I put it. Well, I always keep it here until I need it, and then it's obviously somewhere else. So, um, but here, I am going to show you guys something cool. These in here are all crystals that apported, okay? Which means there was nothing, there it is, there's nothing. And then uh, I, I do a little apportation, but it's not something I would ever do professionally. With me, it's a little hit or miss. But just imagine you're, you go into a meditative state and you invite some, it's like teleportation. But these are apported from uh, the angelic realm. So I got all of these. My teacher reported most of these. And um, this crystal here that's clear has actually changed color multiple times. And um, I'm glad it's clear now. That lets me know, like, it always reflects what's happening in my heart and my soul. So it's very clear now. That's good. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's been all kinds of different colors. It's crazy. So I've worked with people who can levitate themselves. You know, you're talking with someone and the next thing you know, they're a little bit higher up in the air than uh, they were a moment ago. All of these things are possible. And if you want, you can do them. All it takes is learning how, just like learning how to dance salsa or how to sing or how to. Um, you know, write a poem or learn math. It's just about learning how to do it and getting in alignment with the skill sets. That's really all it is. So um, for everyone on Facebook, I'm gonna give you a, uh, a thank you for joining us. And feel welcome to post pictures if you bent things uh, in the comments. Uh, you know, grab your cell phone, snap a picture of what you bent and post it in the comments. I would, you know, it's so much fun for everyone to see that. Um, no pressure, but if you want to, feel welcome. And for everyone who's with me on Zoom, stay on and we're going to have a little chat for a moment on our own. And for everyone on Facebook, if you're wondering, hey, how come I'm not on Zoom? Um, Join my free events programs. I do a couple of free events every month, and then you can uh, get the Zoom link. So uh, there's no charge for that. I just really, really love like doing stuff like this with people. Um, and I'll post in the comments on Facebook. We're going to do this again, I think, in like two months. But you know, again, I have like one or two free events. No, like two free events every month. Uh, join my free events group. I'll put the link in the Facebook comments and um, they're always something weird and fun like this. <laughs> and for everyone on Zoom, uh, let's say bye Facebook and we will uh, have a little chat with us and show off our good stuff. All right, thank you all. Thanks for joining. Have a good night. Okay, and yes, we are no longer on Facebook. <laughs> oh my God, thank you guys.
Thank you. Ted, oh my God, you're, guys, Ted is here with us. He is such a good spoon bender. You know, Ted, I have pictures of your spoons that you bent on my website. That you bent, um, what was it at? At Rising Phoenix, yeah. Right, right, right. Can I show you what I bent tonight? Yes, please do. You can see that. <gasps> it's a rod from Home Depot. So, because I can never tell if I do it physically or not. And so I needed something that actually um, I can't bend physically. So, yeah, I went to Home Depot and bought some of this rod. I am blown away. That is awesome. Oh, pretty neat. I'm pretty excited. Thank you. It was that angelic um, energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful stuff. So I'll, I'll post a picture of this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's great. And, you know, I'd love to chat with you sometime. So let, let's arrange that offline. I'd love to, like, sure. catch up and see what you're up sure. to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys, about Ted with the uh, that big thing of, of iron there, uh, I'm going to tell you a funny story. This is how I learned about plasticware bending. Um, some years ago, God, like a billion years ago, I was um, uh, doing an all-day uh, PK skills class with a bunch of teenagers. So, you know, these kids, you know, it's just like little kids when you say, oh, let's go learn how to ski. The next thing you know, they're going down the double diamond. Um, these kids, like, were picking up everything like that. Like, we're running through every skill I have to teach them, but we're having a blast. So we took a break for lunch and went to a cafe. So we're sitting in this cafe, and um, it's got plasticware. Um, and I'm sitting there looking at my uh, spoon going, hmm, I wonder if I can bend this spoon or not. You know, or will it, like, what if it gets, like, really hot and, you know, plastic burning on your flesh is terrible? Or what if it gets hot and puts out toxic chemicals. I don't want to breathe those. So I'm like feeling like a little bit of a quandary because I really wanted to bend the plastic spoon, but I didn't want any negative effects to hit me. So, you know, since I'm like really immoral, I said, hey, kids, what do you think will happen if you try to use the spoon bending technique on the plasticware? <laughs> And of course, they were immediately like, tch, 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 tch. and we learned there was no like overheating, there was no toxic fumes, there was, you know, nothing bad, no bad effects. Let's see, I'm looking for this was the knife we bent then. Somewhere I have a spoon that I, a soup spoon that I totally like. Once the kids showed me it was safe, I dived in. So we we're sitting there bending it when we realized. The plasticware was so easy to bend because we thought it would be easy to bend because plastic is, you know, more flimsy than metal. But once we realized at that lunch recently, we realized there's literally no difference between the plastic and the metal, except we think there's a difference. And once we realized if we think everything can bend, it doesn't matter what it is, we can bend anything we want, then we can bend anything we want. So we went back to my wellness center and, you know, I also had like a food truck and catering and stuff. So I had a back prep kitchen and they went running in, they're running at all of my, you know, expensive culinary utensils. I'm, they're all ready to start bending my like expensive high grade stuff. I'm like, no, stay away from the catering equipment. But they had just done a bunch of uh, construction work on the other side of the, uh, the parking lot where my wellness center was. And there was a lot of like iron rebar links just piled up. Um, and it was safe. This was safe. I wouldn't put anyone in non-safety except, you know, toxic plastic fumes. Uh, so we went out and we grabbed the rebar and we started because we knew there was no difference between a plastic spoon and rebar, we were bending the rebar. And because I have like middle-aged lady brain, I was able to bend a little bit, but these kids have youthful, like uninhibited brains. They were tying them into pretzels, like literally a rebar pretzel at the hands of this brilliant young man. So remember that, 
Remember, any time you are spoon bending and you can't, just check in yourself. What 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 is stopping me? What because you're the one stopping yourself. Like I guarantee at this moment, if Ted, that beautiful bit of metal bar, and I and one of those wonderful teenagers sat by side, side by side, Ted would do that great job. The teenager would literally have a pretzel or a swirl or curly cue, and I would have it bent a little bit because I got a lot of stuff in myself I got to work out. So whenever I do spoon bending and it doesn't work, I'm like, okay, so what do I got to work on in myself? Oh, thanks, spoon bending. Like once I know I can bend it, then I'm like, wow, spoon bending saved me from seeing a therapist again. That's awesome. <laughs> Anytime I have to release, I'm like, okay, I don't need to release forever, just long enough to bend the spoon. But once you release it and you see how powerful you are, it doesn't need to come back in. <laughs> it can stay away. <laughs> oh, does anyone else have anything you want to show? <gasps> Angela, that's fantastic. This was the <gasps> first one with the quantum. Quantum one. And then I did one with the angelic energy that was a little more <gasps> grouping. And what was my last one? I forgot. Oh, and then my cousin's son walked up. He wasn't listening at all. He's like 14. He goes, oh, yeah, spoon bending. I've done that. And then he just does this <laughs> with, with, with no quantum, no angels, just whatever he has. So that was pretty fun. So we're having a great time. <laughs> oh, my God, that's fantastic. I'm so impressed. I am so impressed. When I sat down and we started this, and now I feel like 100%. I feel amazing. I feel full of energy and just... Thank you, spoon bending. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you, spoon bending. <laughs> and, um, so, uh, you guys, thank you all so much for joining. Oh, hi, Ruth. <gasps> oh, Ruth just said, thanks, Benita. I actually bent my spoon several times. That is amazing. That's amazing. Oh. Well, thank you all so much. Milena, look at that. I love it. <laughs> thank you. And um, you guys feel welcome to keep in touch. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad that we're connected. Um, we have a bunch of free events coming up this month. So check out my calendar. And, you know, if you're not already a member of the free events, uh, bye, Angela. I love you, too. Uh, join it. There's no fee. It's free, but it's fun. And um, feel welcome to uh, keep bending spoons and, you know, keep in contact with me and feel welcome to share pictures. Make mobiles. Bend spoon mobiles. Wind chimes. <laughs> Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Shirley, do you have a spoon to show? Oh, my God, you twisted it. That is so good. I, I, I'll tell you, to do what you just did, I got to get myself into a really deep state of flow and be, like, almost checked out before I can twist it. I am so impressed and a little jealous and like really happy for you. <laughs> yeah. And Karen, thank you so much for like getting up early to join us all the way from Australia. Well, I could bend it, but I bent it before like this, but I have to use a bit of power. I don't get it soft and malleable, but I can move tables and a a port and I I'm a medium so I can do all that with the spirit world so the inviting my guide in worked really well but I I never give up you know I don't and I really want that softness which I haven't got yet but I guess that's with um more practice is that right 
-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I noticed, so you bent yours like the opposite way, like towards the, the bowl. So I got to tell you, that is impressive. That's impressive. You went against the grain and you, so that's, you know, honor yourself for that. Yeah. The first time I ever bent a spoon was years ago. So I was a single mom and um, running a wellness center. So I never had time to take courses. So I just like looked up a few videos on YouTube and there weren't that many. The videos on YouTube were few and far between, a lot of search for little data. But I just carried a spoon with me. I had a spoon, I wish I had it now, but it's photo, it's picture is on all of my spoon bending marketing. It's like a thick spoon and I carried it with me and I just, for like five days, I had it with me all the time. Thank you, Milena. I had it with me all the time, just feeling it, sending energy. And so I picked it up Tuesday evening and then Saturday morning I was sitting there watching some stupid comedy show, you know, while drinking coffee and trying to wake up and I had the spoon and suddenly I felt it. And for the first time I really felt it and I bent it and I bent it. And um, it's, a, it's a very, very solid spoon and it did the, the twisting thing that Shirley did. And, um, and the spoon bowl, I stretched out uh, and I immediately photographed it and that spoon had an aura radiating from it. Uh, so, yeah, so that was like the first time I did it. But once you get it, like even if you don't bend spoon for a long time, it's easy to step back. It's about stepping into the frequency or letting the frequency step into you. And once you're in alignment, it's like yeah. riding a bike. Yeah, I haven't quite got, I know I haven't quite got that yet. I know I haven't. Because when I move the table, there's an ignition and then I hand over to the spirit world and then I take it back. It's like an ignition. I haven't quite got that yet. I have the power to bend a thick spoon, but I haven't got that oof yet. And I think maybe I just need to sit with that a little bit to be able to connect like that. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yeah, don't pressure yourself. It'll happen. And when it does, you're like, oh my God, it was there all along. You yeah. know, like those uh, ruby slippers on doors. Yeah. Things. You could have left odds <laughs> anytime. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us and please keep in touch. You know, oh, I will. I definitely oh. will. Good, good. And my friends, Mary and Gary O'Brien are from your neck of the woods. They're Australian as well. Yeah, are they in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you should definitely check them out. Who knows, they might even be your neighbors. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you all. Thank you. And um, listen, have a great evening. Feel good. And uh, when you get ready for bed at night, feel welcome to just like, while you're relaxing, try it again. Spoon mm. bending is super like channeling and realigning. Mm. I do it a lot yeah, before I, like I go to it. bed. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, mm. Karen does it before she wakes up in the morning, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well. 24 hour clock, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And you guys practice with my videos that I have there, you know, on my website because there's a lot of them. There's a lot. And that'll let you know, like, oh, this one really kicks in. And, you know, like, you'll, it'll help you find the one that, like, really works for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. very much. Nice meeting everyone. Thank Bye. you all. Thank you. Mwah. Have a Bye. wonderful day. You Bye. Too. Thank you. Bye.